Hi, welcome to Beyond the Cards. I'm Allison DiNicola, and I am so excited today to welcome my guest, uh, Fyodor Pavlov, who is the uh, illustrator, author, creator of the uh, Fyodor Pavlov Tarot. We're going to get to talk about that today. Um, I'm very excited about this. Um, it's such a beautiful um, item. There's a lot to talk about. Um, but I welcome you um, to be on the cards. I'm uh, really excited to uh, be able to converse and to um, share um, some of your background and some of your inspiration with our listeners and viewers. So welcome, welcome. Thank you. Yeah. So um, before we get started, I'm just going to read a little bit of your bio um, so people get a little bit a taste of um, who you are, um, and then we can get into uh, what what we're here today to talk about uh, and to talk about your work and uh, your inspiration. So uh, Fyodor Pavlov is a queer Russian American artist who works primarily through the medium of watercolor and ink and maintains a strong portfolio fo focused on motifs of history, queer sexuality, and esoteric occultism. In print, Pavlov's work can be found on the other side, an anthology of queer paranormal romance, dates, an anthology of queer historic fiction, serving pride, mine, a celebration of liberty and freedom for all benefiting Planned Parenthood, and more. He's got so much more to share. His most recent project is uh, Fyodor Pavlov Tarot, uh, which was printed to great acclaim through Kickstarter and is being published by U.S. Game Systems, We'll be here in October, just probably um, a couple of weeks from when we're recording this. So um, super excited. And towards the um, and when we do publish this, we will put all of your links um, and bio and things there so people can find you. So um, welcome to Beyond the Cards. And, you know, we you know, I have a great opportunity always when I'm talking to people. First of all, I'm so thrilled to be able to meet you in person and just get your um you know, your insight and your input to what, um, you know, where you're coming from and how you got started down this path. So maybe you could just share with the listeners um, a little bit of like your background and how you got started um, doing, uh, doing your art, your, your creations. Uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, I've been drawing since childhood. Uh, I was uh, one of those like gifted kids in a family of mo mostly mathematicians, statisticians, and e economists. Um, so Growing up in a Russian household, you know, when you have some kind of talent, uh, your parents push for it. So kind of throughout my life, like I was given art lessons. Uh, and as I went into high school, I went into an art high school in New York. Um, that all kind of stopped around college uh, because then suddenly I needed to have a career and art was no longer um, yeah. <laughs> considered a viable option. But I, I continued to draw uh, even throughout getting uh, an English literature degree, which is equally as useful. <laughs> um, <laughs> so true. But um, yeah, uh, so I kept making art, you know, putting it online, uh, finding people who enjoyed it. Uh, eventually I started taking commissions um, and I, it got to a point where I was basically working two jobs where I would be having my office library job during the day. And then I would come home at night or over the weekends and I would be working on commission projects like book illustration, a lot of freelance um, art. Um, and eventually with the support of my partner, uh, because no artist stands alone in being able to sort of break away from having a day job, uh, I decided to take the leap and go into full-time uh, art making and it went fairly well. <laughs> um, you know, it took a while to sort of build up, but because I'd been doing it for so long already, you know, throughout sort of my, my youth and then 20s, um, I had a bit of like a foundation built up. And so, yeah, I just kept, I kept doing it. And I, uh, at a certain point, decided that freelance was good, but it wasn't quite enough. Um, and so I would having a deep interest in tattoo art, uh, I decided to pursue an apprenticeship and sort of expand my creative portfolio that way. Uh, and so I ended up being having once again, two jobs, one as a tattoo artist and one as a freelance illustrator. <laughs> That's awesome. So amazing. It, now uh, I just saw your arm. So <laughs> yes, <laughs> you, did you, um, do you, I mean, is this like a weird question to ask? Like, did you, can you do that? To, can you tattoo yourself? 
It is not at all a weird question. It's actually, yeah, no, it's very much a rite of passage uh, as a tattooer. um, You tattoo yourself at a certain point. Some people that that's the first person they will tattoo. Not for me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I had very willing, wonderful friends who let me (laughs) uh, do tattoos on them, but yeah, these, I didn't do any of these obviously because that would be a little tricky. Yeah. Uh, But I have a couple of tattoos on my legs that I've done myself. Awesome. That's amazing. It's such an art form, right? We have, we do have a, couple of um different of our artists creators that are um like are in the world of tattoo as well so i yeah. mean it's body art i mean that's that's awesome yeah so okay so you were you know let me ask you a question about your family did your whole family move from russia uh, so or did you emigrate here on your own did you come um around? it was a, a little bit of both uh in the sense that, uh, so my grandparents, my grandfather uh, worked in New York for a while back when my mom was very young and I wasn't even quite born yet. Um, and so my family had connections to the US that way, uh, but uh, I was obviously born in Russia to Russian parents and my mother eventually immigrated here when I was 13 years old. Uh, and so I came with her. Okay, yeah, yeah. just curious, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's cool, it's awesome. So, um, so you were doing your tattoo, doing your art, um, getting commissions. And I know, cause I have two, I have two art sons, one's a musician and one's a photographer. So I know the whole, the whole journey in the arts, right? You can't yeah. just do one thing. I mean, you really have to be, you know, a jack of all trades doing a lot of different things. How did you get involved with the world of tarot? Like what, it, what was your inspiration or were you reading cards? How did that all happen for you? Um, well, so funnily enough, uh, when I was doing art, you know, and sort of getting trash and a lot of people would tell me to make a tarot deck. And I was like, never, never in a million years, 78 illustrations. It's such a huge project. And I also, I wasn't super familiar with the tarot at the time. Um, it was one of those things that I, you know, in high school, I dabbled in a little bit, like everybody (laughs) of a certain spiritual band is like, oh, this is cool. Um, But yeah, it took a while for me to sort of get into tarot reading because it seemed like such an overwhelming task to like learn what all these images mean. And, you know, uh, but at a certain point, my mother-in-law got me a deck as a gift and it was the Russian tarot of St. Petersburg because she Mm -hmm. thought, you know, I'm Russian and I will enjoy this. And I did. And she was very correct. Uh, And because it was a gift and because it felt very, very special and it was a very thoughtful kind of present, um, I decided to start learning how to read it. Um, And just looking up online, uh, looking up some books. One of the first books I read was Rachel Pollack's 78 Degrees of Wisdom. Mm -hmm. Um, And I sort of started getting into it. And as I was learning them, I wasn't even, you know, a very uh, well-versed tarot reader. I started thinking of my own images or like things that I I love uh, Pamela Coleman Smith's imagery so much, but I kept thinking of like, I love this base uh, foundation. What, what would I change? Like, what would make this the perfect card for me? Like what would speak to me? What, what do I like about it? What I don't like about it. And as I did that, um, I started getting this needling notion that I should draw my own versions. Um, And basically it was one of those projects where I gave myself an out because I am a completionist by nature. I, it was very difficult for me to like think of embarking on such a huge project, which is why I said no to it so, so much over the years um, because I was like, you know, I would hate to abandon it, but because I was so fired up to do it, I said to myself, I was basically like, okay, if you get bored, if this stops losing meaning to you, if this no, is no longer of interest, it's okay to stop doing it. Um, and because this was not a paid project, this was just something I was doing on my own, mm-hmm. on my own time, between commissions, between day jobs, between all of it, you know, it was sort of like a nice, fun thing to dive into because it was very personal and it wasn't for anybody but me. Um, but, and that kept me interested that just kept me going for five years <laughs> while I yeah, was making yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and eventually it became, you know, bigger than just a personal project, of course. Uh, but it was also an educational thing for me because as I made my own cards, I learned the cards and I learned how to read with them. And I, it, it added a layer of meaning that I think I probably wouldn't have gotten it if I had only just remained as a reader. Because I don't know, I guess I have a tendency to just dive into and make my own thing when I'm learning about a thing. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's first of all, it's so amazing because I mean, tarot, in my view, is it's a labor of love, right? You have to you have to be committed. Any really any cre- 
creating anything of this like scope, um, you know, is, is a huge commitment to, to the, all of that. Yeah. The images, um, like you said, learning the symbolism, understanding the symbolism. It's hard to create something if you don't really know what it is. But literally every person I know um, that is a creator has said they lived through each of the archetypes each it's just an incredible journey right yeah to live through each of the archetypes as you create um i mean i find that through writing like everything that i'm writing i have to kind of embody part yeah. of that so sometimes it's like you know you're maybe you're creating the tower or something right right you have to get into that energy so um i mean so yeah go ahead <laughs> my favorite suit to work through was the swords <laughs> oh my god <laughs> which is like so so telling and i know it makes me sound like such a I, but for lack of a better word like such the a other goth, way, right for the but sword, i love swords, it like i'm like oh my god i don't want any swords and nope. um, I did pull a card today for our, for our talk. I'll show that to you at the end. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. So five years. So it was five years in creation and then you start, did a Kickstarter. Is that yeah. Well, it was actually four happened? years, four solid years of drawing. Okay. And then the Kickstarter was like the next year of awesome getting that ready, you know, putting it out, getting the funding and then publishing. Amazing. Yeah. Awesome. And so, um, so, you know, so you came, you and U.S. Games, how did you guys um, come together? How did you? I, having done the Kickstarter, which was, you know, in some ways a very pleasant surprise for how well it did. Mm -hmm. I, I had a feeling because there was a lot of excitement for the cards, you know, building for four years while I was working on them because I kept sharing the work like for a long time on my Patreon. It was just like it was the focus because people would get sort of a look of like the imagery and then what all the inspiration is that eventually became the guidebook, all of those posts. Um, so, so there was a lot of anticipation and the Kickstarter went incredibly well, but because it went incredibly well, it was a lot of work. And I kept thinking, well, I worked so hard for so long and I want this deck. I don't want this to be like a limited exclusive thing. I want it to be functional. I want it to be available. I want it, anybody who wants it, I want them to be able to have it. And I would hate to have to do a Kickstarter every single time to renew my runs. Mm -hmm. You know, I immediately thought about, okay, the plan for this is Kickstarter first, and then I will find a publisher uh, one way or another. And US Games was kind of at the top of my list of publishers while I was sort of tentatively researching and looking at it. And Christmas, <laughs> Christmas of 2020, was it? I just wrote a blind letter, like a blind submission to us games. And it was the first uh, company I submitted to. And I was like, Hey, I have this. It's all done. It's ready to go. It it did really, really well in Kickstarter. Do you want it? And they said, yes. And I said, great. <laughs> it's, always, it's always awesome. You know, like, you know, that's, I, to be honest, it's not always the story, right? Yeah. Yeah, um, for sure. For, for I didn't expect it to be the story. Yeah, for all of us with creation, but it was the right, right place, right time. And also, um, and when folks see the art, they're going to know why there was, there was no doubt. So, um, tell me how you, so you had, um, uh, the Russian tarot of St. Petersburg. Mm -hmm. How did you, you know, did you move on and get yourself a Smith weight or, um, uh, you know, any kind of writer? What would, you know, how did you move into this before you created your own? How did you decide to use that as your, um, template? Yeah. Um, so, I'm trying to remember what was my second deck. Um, it wasn't the Smith weight, which is funny. Um, I think my second deck that I got might have been the Cat Black Golden Tarot. I think okay. that might have been the second mm -hmm. one. But if it isn't, it is my go-to deck. Um, I did eventually get uh, the Centennial Edition of the, the Coleman Smith deck, which I love and I have read with quite a lot. And it's mm -hmm. the imagery that I, I got it as I started working because it obviously it was the imagery that I wanted to study because that was the springboard of it all for me. Um, and I have quite a collection of decks now, but the thing that I've always found essential is um, having a fully illustrated minor arcana rather than pips. Mm -hmm. um, so even though I have quite a few of the more like uh, the, the ancient Italian tarot and a few of those decks that have just the pip imagery and I do love the ma the major arcana because I love sort of the historic quality of some of those pieces that are a little bit pre the, the visuals are a little bit pre Coleman Smith you know um, I 
really, really vibe with having an image. As an artist, I need an image. I will not remember what, a, you know, seven of acorns means yeah. <laughs> if I look at it. Um, but yeah, so I've worked with the Coleman Smith deck, but my go-to has been uh, Cat Black's Golden Tarot. Uh, something about the... So often I will see decks use famous art like there's the Mooka deck there is the dolly deck mm -hmm. um but they will use the images and they don't quite mesh they're good enough as a representation of what the card is but they're not quite there and cad black achieved something incredible with her deck by making collages of medieval art medieval and renaissance art that first of all look so seamless and how they look like their own art objects uh, their own standout pieces of art rather than a collage and then she really thinks about the imagery that she wants to convey. Um, and there's like a richness, uh, there's a richness to the to this deck that just was so, I responded so much to. And so that's the one that I kind of reach for all the time. Yeah. So it was like that one, the Coleman Smith deck um, were kind of my main inspirations for what I wanted. Um, sorry, can you hear my cat? Yes. <laughs> oh no, okay. <laughs> what was your cat's name? Uh, it's uh, which one? It depends on which one's out the door, oh. but I think it's it's I think it's Deet. Oh, we named deep. her Marlena Dietrich, but she does not live up to the glamour yeah. of her name. <laughs> she wants to come in. She's like, I want to be in on this yeah. conversation. Like, That's no so one cute. Is <laughs> um, I love it. I totally get it, and I and I agree with you um, that it can be challenging, especially for readers that are not. Um, you know, I'm a visual person, so I do need that. I need that image to spark my intuition. Like yeah. I can see the image and then in the image, maybe is something will pop in my head. And generally when I see things that are just, you know, it's just like, you know, four or five, six, whatever, I'm, bu I'm busy counting up how many there are trying to yeah. figure out the Roman numeral. And I find that takes me out of like, you know, being intuitive reader and being into, you know, like getting exact on the card. So um, yeah, I totally get it. I love that you did that. So I pulled this, um, I want to show a little bit about the, the deck because it's so beautiful. Um, so the first card I pulled um, um, before we got on was the chariot. And uh, I wanted to just talk about uh, when I read about you doing uh, watercolor and ink. I just think it's so awesome how that combination um, comes together because it yeah. gives the detail of the ink. But, you know, there's, there's that... Um, uh, swash of you know yellow or gold and you know so we can just kind of read in into um, some of the cards through your use of color because you mm -hmm. you know done the ink and that so um so I knew our our uh our time together was going to be fast and great because I pulled the chariot <laughs> but then it was funny because when you said you love the swords I I just took a half of the deck and I thought, <laughs> oh my gosh, here we are, Ten of Swords. Yeah. Um, and so again, but you know, like what what hit me of that is also, um, you know, your ink. And of course the drawing is really, you know, it's showing us uh, what that is, but I just love your use of color and the red um, and the red handled sword. So um, so there's a lot, the, the deck is really rich. I wanted to show, I'm sure people are going to be doing like a zillion reviews of this and that, but I just love it because it's got the gilt edges and I love the card back. Uh, I gasped when I saw so, those edges. I was so yeah. happy. <laughs> so the edges are really beautiful. And, um, and so it does come with an incredible um, hardback book. And so um, what I wanted to, so these were the posts. So I started to read some of the descriptions and what I loved is that in addition to giving a description of what the card is, you're talking about how you came to choose that image or how this card evolved for you. So I think that's just awesome for people to, um, you know, was that part of your posts when you were promoting? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so you're getting, a, you're getting um, like a double, a double uh, thing. And then of course, here's the, um, the front cover of the box. So it's a big chunky um, deck. Yeah, I love how everything fits into the box, too. Everything came together really nicely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So do, are you going to work on another project now that this is coming to? Um, so I've actually taken a long break from tattooing during the pandemic for obvious reasons. Uh, so I've kind of only just gotten back to it back in May. And it's been definitely eating up a lot of my time. 
um, because obviously there's a lot of drawings that I have to do for clients. And I, after completing such a big project, I definitely felt very like empty. Um, mm -hmm. It was good to, you know, I, I work small. Uh, the original art for these cards is only a little bit bigger. I think it's about, uh, how tall are they? Like eight or nine inches tall. So they're not very big at all. Mm -hmm. um, and I was very ready to get back to like short, quick to finish projects. Mm -hmm. um, and that said, super secret. <laughs> Uh, this isn't news, but I will say there is a note uh, on my, uh, an ongoing developing note on my phone uh, up for an Oracle deck. I am okay. writing down ideas. All right. Um, so who knows here. if, when, I don't know, because I definitely was like, I need a big, big step back from a project like this, just like, um, and see what happens. Um, I think a lot of things will probably happen before this will. Uh, one of the big things I really want to do is I want to do an art book uh, because I haven't done one of those in a few years. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what I've been softly working on in the back. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I, okay. I have a feeling there is like going to be some kind of future divination project in my future for sure. I think, I think you're right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it is, it is, it's wise to take a step back and you know um, this is um, so it's just coming um, today is September 15th. As we're recording this, by the time this airs, it probably will be uh, a month or so from now. So the deck will be here at that point. We're, we're just waiting for it um, to come. But we've had so much response um, already. I know that for a fact. So, um, I, you know, we're anticipating that, you know, you're going to be very busy just, um, you know, with people reaching out to you and maybe even, you know, being on social media. I don't know how active you've been, but you will be back to that i'm sure yeah. <laughs> um and i'm just i'm really excited for you it's really beautiful uh amazing project something to really be proud of and i just have this feeling you're going to be doing a lot i mean i just there's no way you can stop here right yeah we're gonna need we're gonna need to see a little bit more so um yeah. so congratulations um on this and um before i go i always like to ask people um if they have this is kind of my goofy last question, but I always like to ask people if they have um, like a superpower or some other thing. I mean, you obviously have <laughs> so many talents, right? But maybe there's something else about you that people don't, you know, readily know or whatnot. Um, it could be something fun or goofy or whatever that um, that you're willing to share. Um, yeah, um, it's, that is a really funny question. Uh, also, thank you so much for uh, all your kind words about the deck. I am also super, super excited. Um, but yeah, so I, I have what I call useless CSP, um, <laughs> which is, uh, it manifests in very goofy ways. And I say this very tongue in cheek. I don't think it's actually ESP. I think it's probably just me being good at guessing or reading my surroundings. But I remember the way I picked up on it is like, as a kid, I would sit in class in like school and be like, oh my gosh, what if today for lunch, you know, we had this kind of sandwich, like, wouldn't that be great? And it's, it, it always manifests as like a question of like, oh, I wish that would yeah. happen. I, I would love that for that to be the thing. And then it would, that would be the thing that would, that would be the sandwich that's being served for lunch that day. It's cool. All right. I and love little that. things like this throughout my days, like, it, it popped off the other day. I, God, what was it? It was just like another little an anticipa anticipatory, like random guess out of nowhere about something that would happen that day. And then it did. <laughs> You're a manifester. That's a manifesting <laughs> thing. That's not, that's not useless ESP. That's like, that's like, I want to have that. I want that chicken sandwich. And there it is. So I guess, I love yeah. It. It's so funny. <laughs> that's awesome. I love that. So, um, so thanks so much for taking time with us. Um, uh, beyond the cards and us games we're so thrilled um for your deck and uh and for more uh partnership together hopefully well thank future. you yeah it's yeah, my pleasure yeah. all right thanks so much all right